Well, we had a charging system issue with the 73 Mach 1. The first thing I want to point out is this is a first generation alternator, but it isn't the one that you would typically see. This is what is called a side terminal alternator because the stator and field wire connector plugs into the side of the alternator as opposed to being attached to terminals in the back of the alternator. Um, otherwise, it is pretty much the same as a more conventional rear terminal first generation alternator. So, what I did to test the charging system first is I made sure I was dealing with the battery that was fully charged, I was, and then I bypassed the wire at the voltage regulator harness. The orange and blue wire goes to the end terminal of this connector into the voltage regulator. So I took a jumper wire and I jumpered between that terminal for field going down to the alternator and positive power. What that does is it applies voltage to what's called the field coil of the alternator, the rotor, basically rotor windings. And when that happens and the alternator is turning and there's voltage applied, it will create voltage to be produced in the stator windings. And then we should get output from the alternator. When full battery voltage is applied to the field circuit, we should get the most output we can get from the alternator in terms of voltage and amperage. So by jumpering positive battery voltage to the field circuit, I am bypassing the regulator and telling the alternator, give me all you got. With the engine running, and I was getting no output. So that told no matter what the regulator was doing, the alternator wasn't able to do its job. Typically, Almost always, that's a good indication that there is a problem with an alternator or some sub-circuit or sub-assembly in it. <clears throat> so I went ahead and removed the alternator in order to either repair or replace it. When I did, I found a problem as soon as I looked at where the field and stator circuit plug plugs into the side of the alternator, what's underneath here are two spade terminals. Kind of hard to see, but they're there. And they plug into the receptacle, like any other spade terminal, flat spade, uh, spade terminal would. Except in this case, the spade terminal for the field circuit was missing. I thought it was broken off. So I brought the alternator to a local shop that specializes in charging and starting system components and asked if he had the new holder for the receptacle, which also holds the brushes for the back of the rotor. He took a look and said, you know, I think I can fix that. So he went ahead and he pulled the terminal back into position and epoxied it and said, this will take care of it. Well, that's fine, we got home. I installed the alternator and that did take care of it. However, the diagnostic routine I had gone through was a bit more involved than just jumping the field circuit. When I saw, 
I had power to the field circuit, I made sure with the test light probe that I had power when I jumpered the field circuit, I had power down here. Then what I did is while the field circuit is being bypassed, I used a handheld ammeter to find out how many amps of current were going through the field circuit. I was getting zero. So I checked on our other 73 Mustang and I should have gotten 2.85 amps through the field circuit when it jumpered like that. So that told me that inside either the brushes were worn or the rotor had an open circuit in its windings. I didn't expect to see a spade terminal in the receptacle for the field circuit to be missing or pushed into the housing. Anyway, um, I'm gonna stop here and show you a picture or two first of the receptacle with the spade terminal not showing, it got pushed into the block and one with it repaired. So we'll stop this recording and we'll pick it back up. So once I was done putting the new alt or the repaired alternator back in, I was able then to go ahead and once again test the field circuit to make sure it was operating as expected. So as before, I had removed the, um, the connector. And I put one clip down on a positive cable, um, the positive side of the starter relay. Hopefully, you can see that. And I'm going to set the amp meter. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to connect this to the field circuit wire and then you should be able to see how many amps are flowing through it. Four point zero. That's not the same as two point eight five we had on the other car. But this is apparently a higher capacity or different capacity output alternator. And that will affect how many amps of current flow through it. The more amps that flow through it, the higher the output of the alternator. So at least we had something flowing through there. So it tells me that when we start this engine, after I plug the regulator harness back in, of course, we will have output from the alternator, whereas before we had none. Had a person normally had a car like this with an alternator and a regulator that was bad, often both units get replaced. Just to make sure we got everything. I can understand that to some degree, but I really wanted to know which piece was having a problem. It's fixed. I'm a happy camper. And I just want to go over the diagnostic routine I followed to make sure it was the alternator initially that had a problem and it wasn't something else. Okay, one more word. Are you really, really happy? I'm thrilled because now... No, you're not. If we look outside, the roads are wet. It's oh, raining. Okay. Snow is expected tonight into tomorrow. Guess who's not going to be able to drive this around the block because it's too wet on the roads. In a few days, we'll be able to. So you're not completely I'm happy. not thrilled as much as I could be. I'd be more thrilled if we could take it out for a quote-unquote test drive. But at least we get to start this thing up and let it run. And I enjoy seeing the charging system is once again working. And I get to do some other tinkering. There's other things I want to do with this thing, which we'll be doing a video on after we get done with this.